Hey everybody, welcome to Life is Brutal. I'm Anthony. Today, uh, we have to talk about uh, something that's been pretty prevalent in the news here recently, especially in the beer world. And uh, if you are, you know, at all tuned into beer social media, beer uh, news, or current events, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, here recently, there has been a series of allegations that uh, target a wide amount of craft breweries and uh, more traditional, more businessy breweries uh, around the world for uh, sexual harassment, sexual assault, rape, uh, misogyny, sexism. I mean, it's just a whole lot racism. I mean, it's just it's it's been big, and there are a lot of people that are getting drug up in this net. And I think it's pretty important to cover this, not only for uh, I, I see it as a bit of a historical event. You know, it's definitely newsworthy of what is happening in our current era of beer. But I also think it's incredibly important to talk about this uh, just for the social awareness of it, how we can better ourselves as a community, but also to just uh, talk talk about this because it's just such an egregious issue amongst all facets of life, you know, and uh, I want to better the beer community. I want to better beer drinkers and businesses. And I think the number one way to start this is to uh, talk about it. And, you know, the platform has already been created. The conversation has been started. I just want to add my voice to it and see if I can help push that, you know, boulder up that hill, even if it's just by an inch, you know, I want to do my part and I want to make sure that, uh, I, I, I use what little platform I have to do so. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the backstory, the context, uh, the results, and uh, what the future is going to look like. So uh, let's get into it. Rat Magnet, a.k.a. Brienne Allen, is the production manager at Notch Brewing in Salem, Massachusetts. She actually has a rather impressive resume, over a decade of experience in the industry working at Notch, as well as Jack's Abbey, which is a pretty famous lager producing brewery, and I, it's impressive to see her cutting her teeth in uh, such an interesting entrance to the market you know most people i think in the industry are you know cooking up ales and stuff like that and lagering is just a whole new world the point i'm trying to get at is she has a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of experience from these previous employments and it actually gives her a leg up in competition over a lot of her peers including you know men in the industry However, it appears that she doesn't always get the credit and the respect that a seasoned professional in her industry should. It seems that just because that she's a woman, she gets looked down on in the beer industry despite her talent and her skill. Since we were in quarantine, I kind of forgot all about sexism because I didn't have to uh, be around anybody else for a year and a half. <laughs> so I, yeah. I kind of just totally forgot about it, which is insane. Yeah. And so, of course, like the first day I leave my house, I go down to Brighton to build the new brew house. And I was just getting all these comments from all these contractors there. Cause it's me and our new brewer, Julie. And so we're the only women on site. And mm -hmm. I'm just like carrying. A, it's so stupid, too. They're like simple little comments that just like set me off because I just wasn't expecting it because I haven't heard it in a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like carrying a brew house pipe like from one warehouse to another and this guy just walks by me and starts talking to me like I'm a dog. And he's just like, where are you going with that? What are you doing here? And I was like, what the fuck is happening right yeah. now? No one's ever talked to me like a dog before. And then it just kept happening all day. I'd be literally under the brew house on my back like trying to put these fucking pipes together and these men are just coming over trying to talk to me like asking me if I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, did you go to school for this? Why are you here? Kind of shit. And then Modern Draft is next to me building a one-of-a-kind draft system that's like never been done before. And no one's going over to them and being like, <laughs> how did you learn, to, you do learn this? to do this? Like they're making something way more intense. Mm -hmm. And like they're inventing something standing there. And I'm literally just putting clamps and gaskets together. It was these comments, which could seem small at the moment, you know, especially if it's something that you're used to receiving on 
the day in and day out. Something that you're accustomed to hearing. It's, it's not shocking to her that someone was acting and talking to her like that. And it was that breaking point that would prime Brianna to go and take the beer industry and all of its sexist bullshit head on. So she got home, she took to social media, and she posted the question, are there women in the industry who are feeling sexism or misogyny? And what are their stories? She just wanted to be a platform, a, a shoulder, an ear to lend for people who are going through the same troubles and just kind of want to talk about it. Little did she know that just by opening that door up, just a friendly, you know, almost innocent, just wanting to connect with other people who go through the same bullshit that she goes through, it created this snowball effect that became nearly uncontrollable and would go on to wreak havoc in the best sort of way throughout the industry. Over the next few weeks, Rat Magnet's inbox would be flooded with thousands of stories from around the world detailing experiences of women who had experienced varying levels of sexism in the beer industry, ranging from degrading talk about how they either don't know what they're doing or that they're incapable of brewing beer due to being a woman, to casual degradation regarding their knowledge, experience, or even interest in beer, to more egregious examples of sexual harassment, assault, and rape. These horrifying stories detailed how some of the most beloved names in the industry either ignored, allowed, or directly acted out these incidents, including Tired Hands, Boulevard, Melvin, Night Shift, Burial, Modern Times, Hill Farmstead, Jackie O's, McKellar. So the guy that came up to me today and talked to me like a dog literally sounded like this. Ready? What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Look at you! The number of stories and offenders were so numerous that people had to aggregate them into spreadsheets in order to more easily track who all were doing the terrible things. And a lot of these incidents were not isolated. They seemed to be continuous patterns of behavior from multiple repeat offenders coming from multiple sources around the globe. The reactions throughout the industry were uh, pretty much as you would expect. Comments from the community were mixed with support, dismissal, and infighting on forum walls around topics of importance and validity. The industry recoiled and several brewers mentioned in these stories resigned, were let go, or placed on leaves of absence. Sean Hill even released a statement which basically said nothing. In his response, he neither took responsibility nor denied the accusations. Modern Times did apologize, but remained intentionally vague on their supposed remedy. The Brewers Association bumbled their response as expected by reemphasizing their code of conduct and their notoriously difficult reporting process, which, since its conception, has had zero reports due to the cumbersome nature of their system, combined with the lack of trust that repercussions to perpetrators or protections to victims would be granted. They did make a video about how to avoid sexual harassment and assault, but they put it behind a fucking paywall. What little that the Brewers Association actually did do was offer a discounted membership for life, lifetime membership, to the sexual assault prevention program uh, known as hashtag we vow. And uh, if you use code BA50, you get up to 50% off for a lifetime membership. Not joking. That sounds like a YouTuber promo. You still are going to pay. And look, you know, this is coming out of our end. You know, we we actually had, uh, they originally want to give a 20% discount. And then we said, how about you kick it up to 50? We, you know, we'll cut out what our commission. Yeah. So we, 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 we stand, Queens. Yeah, we, we hear you fellow girl bosses, and we are here to make sure that you can yas queen your way through the industry. Week after week, stories continued to flood into Rat Magnet's inbox. I mean, we're talking thousands. Currently on the Rat Magnet Instagram story, there are 10 archived posts that detail thousands already, thousands of uh, accounts and instances and anecdotes, all expressing their concern or their interactions or their victimization within the industry. And by going through reading all these stories, posting these stories, and you know, bearing the brunt of it, being the face of this, you know, movement, it's taken its mental toll on her. 
it just, yeah, it totally opened the floodgates of people getting, oh, I get to say my story and have no accountability for what's about to happen because Brienne's going to take, you know, the brunt of all of it. And which is still happening. Like I told you when I came in, people are like so upset with me for not posting their stories today. And they're like, our company's never going to change unless you post this story that I've been trying to send you for a week. I'm like, why is this still like, they're, everyone's clearly just like banking on me outing these breweries and they're not taking any initiative themselves to like, even after yeah. a week of this being insane, they still aren't taking the accountability to go and like report these supervisors or coworkers to anybody. And I just don't know how to like get it through that. Like it's okay now. Like, look what we did. It's like, everyone's ta- speaking up. Like we can all say it, but the, everyone's still too scared. So like what, how do we fix that? I don't know. Posts on her Instagram depict her troubles dealing with this massive story and depressing realness of the gravity of these stories, all while she is being thrust into the spotlight as the face of this movement. Adding to the stress is the fact that she's worried that she might actually be the subject of legal lawsuits in the future revolving around uh, libel or slander or wrongful termination of employment, all, com- all because she was the host for people to tell their stories through. She even had to establish a GoFundMe for potential legal troubles and had to put a disclaimer on her page to try and show the potential untruthfulness in the stories she posts. Which brings us to the hardest part of this conversation. And that is uh, something that I strongly feel that needs to be covered because I know it's something that a lot of people have been uh, focusing on in order to dismiss this event. And that is the validity of the stories. As a man, someone who uh, has never and will likely never be someone who has to face uh, a situation where I am in a not position of power in regards to women in the workplace. I mean, it, it's just, I've never been in that. And I don't think I actually know anyone who has where they have been at such an overwhelming disadvantage as women in the beer industry are. I think the current uh, Brewers Association statistics say that over 94% of people in the industry, professionals in all facets, are men. And out of that, what, 6% remaining that are women, only 7% of that 6% are women in positions of management or power or authority in any way. When you look at the numbers like that, it really shows just how great that power divide is. Now, I needed to say all that because once again, as a man, it's just as easy for me to believe these stories on one hand as it is for me to not believe them, to see them as works of fiction. And that's because I haven't had to go through that experience. Without hard evidence, these stories can't be proven to be reality. You know, uh, in, in a weird way, it's just words on the internet that both fill the void of fiction and uh, nonfiction, you know, reality. And the thing is, it's not for us, the readers, the viewers, the outsiders to make that judgment call. That is the reality and fiction aspect of it. That is something that is needs to be decided and determined by the people who are actually in these stories, uh, the people who suffered and the people who victimized and lastly, the legal system. That is for them to determine the reality of it. We, the non-participants, our role is not to, to make that determination. It's not for us to decipher reality. Our job is to analyze these stories and take away the underlying message from it all. We as an industry, and on a larger scale as a society, have not taken the proper precautions to safely create an environment where it is both welcoming and safe and inviting to people on a variety of genders. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, people is, the women just can't take a joke or whatever. It's not about whether or not your joke was funny or not. It's not about whether she has a sense of humor or she just can't take a joke. It's not about what your actual intentions were. It's how people receive you that actually matters. It doesn't matter if you didn't mean to hurt someone's feelings or make them scared or make them feel threatened. The, at the end of the day, they felt that way. 
and you do have to kind of provide some uh, ownership of that, of your actions and your words and their effects. You have to ask yourself honestly, do you think this industry and this hobby and this community, which is widely seen as like a bros club situation, you know, where it's just the boys hanging out, brewing beer, drinking beer, cracking open some cold ones with the boys. Do you really think that that industry and that community is set up to provide safety and to provide uh, avenues for dealing with problems that stem from that toxic culture that protects women? Do you really think it's set up like that? And If not, do you think, do you not think that just maybe this is happening to some scale? It's hard to think that out of thousands of stories being sent in on this topic, at least like half of them, maybe even a third of them are certainly true, if not all of them. And if even if it is only just a third, don't you think that's too much? We as a community, as an industry, as a hobby, we have to accept that uh, we haven't done it the best. We haven't set it up perfect and that we have made some mistakes along the way as far as uh, actually being welcoming, actually being inclusive and actually being protective of the minority demographics within our pie chart. We have to accept that along with racists that we saw last year, there are also sexist, misogynists, and predators. And the sad, unfortunate part is there might be some people who are doing these things, who actually don't think what they're doing is bad, who might think that what they're doing is just harmless. I certainly believe that there are some people ignorant out there like that, but I don't think you're gonna find an entire workplace where everyone is that ignorant. I think that we as a society, we build up a level of complacency where We might see something like that and we're like, oh, well, she didn't seem so mad about her or whatever. And we just let it go. If we let it go, we are just as bad. Not speaking up, not telling somebody to chill it out, not offering some type of support to the victim, just as bad. It's all of our responsibility to stamp this type of behavior out. And it doesn't really matter what your role or your uh, authority within the industry is. Everyone has a voice, you know, and there are ways to amplify it. And, you know, we need to all be doing our part. You see someone acting out, we stamp that shit out instantly. It is not welcome here. That's the stance we have to take. And that might mean we have to get rid of our funny little, you know, busty blonde ales or, you know, our, you know, slutty cream ales or our labels with like big fat titties on them and all that other stuff you know like that's stuff that (laughs) it's just not welcoming it's not it it perpetrates that environment of toxicity that allows things like this to happen it reinforces that whole boys club narrative throughout this story i mentioned hill farmstead and modern times a few times and that's because Uh, Out of the majority of the names mentioned, they were the ones who got the most attention uh, revolving around their responses to these allegations. And as I mentioned earlier, they were either intentionally vague or they were like say nothing responses wet, you know, a bunch of multiple paragraph long response that had no true substance or value in it for taking blame or even denying it, as I mentioned earlier. And the reason I focus on these two stories in particular, the Hill Farmstead and Modern Times, is because their responses, if we allow that and accept that as a justifiable and acceptable response to these allegations, then that would be us being complacent. Their responses are them trying to sweep it under the rug. Our job is to not let them, not just those two, but all of the other breweries mentioned in it, Jackie O's, Burial, all of them. We have to hold people accountable and we have to allow victims' voices to be heard. So that's why I am incredibly, incredibly proud of Rat Magnet and everything that she's doing to uh, make this discussion even in people's minds. You know, it's crazy, you know, myself included, that, uh, you know, it took something like this for people to actually take a look at it. You know, I certainly accept that I have not, you know, been as tuned in and as engaged in the industry as I probably should have. 
and you know I and you know it kind of makes you just think about it you know the only way to cut this type of cancer out of our community is to not allow it to just get swept under the rug we all have to kind of take a little stand and you know the first step is supporting rat magnet so uh, all the links are down below for her GoFundMe and you know even if it's just to gain awareness and spread awareness you know her social media and all the stories and everything I highly encourage you to sit through and read them you know I I cracked open a couple beers and I just read through every single one of them the other day and it's heartbreaking to see what some of these people had to go through. I know some of you will continue to question Rat Magnet's post, but my question to you is, uh, if you even possibly think that something like this is kind of happening throughout the community, wouldn't you want to call attention to it and figure something out to stamp it out? Thank you for watching, everybody. I really hope you... Uh, enjoy is not the right word. Um, I really hope you took something away from this. I, 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 It's a hard topic to talk about, especially... From me, I don't have a whole lot of experience in it, but I think it's something that needs to have a light shed on it. So, um, yeah, I know this one was pretty heavy, but I uh, just got to say thank you for watching and um, go look at all the evidence, formulate your opinions and, you know, make your moral decision. Figure out how it is you're going to prevent that, even if it's just, you know, a solemn promise to yourself that if you see some sexist, misogynist bullshit going on, that you're going to, you know, speak out and try to stop it. So, remember there's a story in every bottle and that life is beautiful. Cheers, y'all.